Hey, it's hard to believe, but almost four months ago, I pulled this body off of this chassis and had to change the floor pan, the trunk pan, and do a whole bunch of work before I was able to bring this chassis back underneath it. So now four months later today, here it is. The chassis is back underneath the body. If you're interested in seeing how we got this done today, stay tuned. Welcome to Restoring Christine. We've got a good episode for you today. I'm very excited because we're going to finally reunite the body back onto the frame. There's been a lot of work that's going into this. I think it's been about eight months to get to this point to where we can finally reunite those two. And it's, it's a big one. So I tell you what, we just finished putting the fuel lines and the brake lines on the frame yesterday. Today, I've got all of today to get it on, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to race against the clock because the weather's not too good. It's supposed to rain today. It's supposed to rain all this week, and I've got to get this thing done. I want to get this this chassis rolled up underneath that frame, and it's uh you know it's it's just going to take a concerted effort today. I'm going to try to document the video as much as possible, and I don't know if you can appreciate it, but every time I take it take the time to set the camera up and everything, it slows me down. So, uh, but I want to do it. I want you to see this. I want to document this. I want to get keep you guys involved. So I appreciate you watching. So let's get on with this one. Hey, Deuce. Deuce is going to supervise today. Huh? Aren't you, Deuce? That's right. So what we got to do today is I've got to get this, this chassis rolled up underneath it. And what I don't have, I don't have the drag link. I don't have the two uh, rotors on. I don't have the brake calipers on, but I'm going to shortcut this. Uh, in order to get it underneath the body, I've got to keep this thing low to the ground. So I'm not going to put any of the tires on it. So the only thing I need to do is once I get it up underneath the car in order to get it set back on the frame and supported by the four wheels, I just need to put the two rotors on. I don't need to put the drag link. I don't need to put the steering box on. I'm going to leave that because, like I said, I'm in a race against the clock with the weather. So I'm going to do the least amount that I, that I possibly can in order to get it out there. But I've got the bushings. I'm going to show you the bushings, the body bushings, and the body bolt set that I've got. I'm going to show you how we lift this thing up. So that's, that's, that's our task for today. Huh, Deuce? That's right. <laughs> that's a good boy. <laughs> All right, I'm underneath the car. I wanted to show you some of the things that I couldn't video before, but um, undercoating on the inside of the wheel wells all around the perimeter where this, uh, where the floor pan, the trunk pan were welded, all those spot welds, I grinded all of those down. They were primed. Then it was painted, painted with rattle can black. Uh, let's see, so you can see it all along the seams. So I did all that along the rocker panels too. So the rocker panels on both sides, as well as at the firewall of tow board. So that's all been um, smooth, primed, painted with black, wheel wells, undercoating inside and out. Um, so it's good to go. So that's everything I've been doing that I haven't been able to video. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> so you can see I'm underneath the car and it's just even a struggle just to hold the camera. So how do you document this one? Particularly when you have fumes and everything rolling all over the place. But we got it done. So we're ready to, uh, to start setting up the chassis to roll it up underneath here. Let's go. Let's keep going. <laughs> My spousal unit just came outside to check on me and she said, what is that? <laughs> I just did that underneath the car. <laughs> it's not a project if I don't draw blood. <laughs> a couple of videos back, I told you some sleepy time bedtime stories. Reviewed some of these shop manuals, like the shop manual and the factory assembly manual. Showed you what to expect in these and uh, it was a pretty boring video, but Again, it's a very important part of these rebuilds, so let's not diss that video too badly. But I want to show you something. So in the factory assembly manual, in the there's body mounting instructions. So they show you where each one of the bolts goes, where all of the body bushings go. They show you the full exploded assembly, how to shim, where to, how to align the shims. 
uh, they've got you got to pay attention it says which model it is whether it's for all models sometimes it's convertible only you can see these with the cross um, they, they label it whether it's for the convertible or the uh, sedan delivery or the nomad so each one of these multiple pages it started on what page 18 and I think it goes almost all the way to 30 so there's a whole bunch of diagrams that show you how to assemble with the, the bolt the washer on the top shim in between the cushion assembly the the here's the body bracket and then on the bottom there's the bottom cushion and then the washer and then the nut so it shows you the full stack at each position so that is in this book very useful information so now in the shop manual, in the shop manual, under the body section, I just want to show you the limitations of this book. So in this one, they show you where they all are, but they don't really tell you much more than that. It's like, all right, body mounting, mounting bolts. So it's telling the mechanics, here's where they are. Doesn't tell you anything about how they're assembled, how to put them in, where to put them in, what they might look like. That's about it. So you get, you kind of get a, a loose idea of what it is. So at most, this is worth knowing if you don't know, like, all right, that's where I can find that this, chass this chassis is, is bolted this, to this, uh, or this frame is bolted to the body. But if you want to know where they go and how they go, it's in here. All right, so now I want to show you the, the body bolt kit, the bushing kit. And I got this from Classic Industries. This is about maybe, I don't know, somewhere around $100, $120. And this made in India I'm not quite sure about the bolts I don't know if the bolts say where they were um, but there's the bolts the washers they all come in this kit I got I got this all together and it looks like no, nothing special in the bolts yeah there's no special markings on those bolts it's not like they're grade 8 or, or anything high they got three three markings on it so uh, whatever grade that is NDF I'm not quite sure but it's not like machine bolts that are grade grade eight or grade five. I'm not, not sure what they are. The bushings, you know, the bushings all have, I guess, part numbers on them, and maybe they might have a, a cross reference, but also in the bushing set, you get the inserts. So it gives you these little pipe sleeves. It looks like it's about the equivalent of maybe three quarter inch EMT, thin wall tubing, thin wall conduit, maybe. It might be the same. So if you're going to do this yourself, you might be able to make this. Somebody commented on one of my videos and said uh, to, to buy a, a, boat, a boat trailer roller, which I'm in South Louisiana. There's trailers all over the place. There's boat supply places all over the place. So I could have done this, but there's round ones that are, of, let's see, they're all, they're all that length. I don't know. Um, there's some that are of a larger diameter. You know, they're... There's some that are of a larger diameter, smaller diameter. So there's two different diameters. There's these inserts. And I personally, I have cut rubber with a hacksaw, and it is a job. And sometimes if you cut it with a wrecking saw, it, you have a tendency, the blade, the blade wants to drag in the rubber, and then it might want to divert, it might want to deflect and then cut, cut crooked. So I didn't want to go through all that. I appreciated the tip for the boat rollers, but I decided to do this. One last Just, thing. I do know that there's a, um, a a leaflet from Dan Chuck. Dan Chuck makes makes one. So when it comes to the shims, when it comes to the shims, they show that it, okay, if your <clears throat> if your doors are pinching in one direction or the other, because you know you don't you, your body is going to have a certain set in alignment to the rocker panel, which is horizontal, and to the door, which is vertical. So they show where to add or subtract shims in order to open the squareness or change the squareness of that in order to fit your door. So if I can find that, I'll put a link to it, but um, I know that there's that. It might be in one of these manuals. I haven't really looked for it too much, but anyway, that's out there. We might need to make reference to it, but let's keep on trucking on. Remember all those times I said I was going to be doing this project myself with my own two hands? What I really mean is I'm going to be doing this project by myself. <laughs> I've got no one to help me. So I've got to get that chassis back there all the way up here to the garage. And that's what I'm going to do by myself. So here we go. <laughs> okay. Is that all I... Whoa! Ooh. No. 
It's... Oh... We gotta stop. That's too much. So while I'm doing this... <laughs> that's Deuce! You gotta be kidding me. Hey, Deuce! Deuce! He's dead. <laughs> All right, so now that I got the chassis back behind the car, now what I need to do is I need to jack it up. I need to remove the wooden frame off the front, off the back, unbolt them, get it up high enough to where I can get the chassis underneath it, put the, uh, the body bushings on, um, and then lower it down and bolt it. Knock on wood, we're almost there. So just to review for those of you that did not see my video on how I lifted this car off of the frame to begin with, I've got a Harbor Freight winch on the front. I've got two brackets that I made, two pad eyes that are on the, on the firewall bolted to where the hood hinges go. So that's a good strong point. And then I made this crazy looking trapeze out of one inch square tubing that basically uh, cradles underneath here at the strongest point of the, of the rear of the car. So that all picks up here and I'm lifting this off of my ceiling framing, my roof framing. I've got to come along back here. And these are all trusses. When I built this garage many years ago, it's all truss framed. So uh, it's strong as can be. I've lifted motors, I've lifted car bodies, I've lifted all kinds of stuff off of it. So that's what we gotta do. What am I waiting for? <laughs> Let's do it. somebody's gonna fuss about it the fact that it's only held up by two points but um, I just need to get that chassis rolled up underneath here I just I'll just have to do it from the side and just make sure I don't get underneath it so nothing can fall and pinch my hands or anything but uh, this is very very solid so um, yes it is a safety concern but I am very confident in what I'm doing here I'm not overly confident um, I tell you what I do for my day job, but you probably wouldn't believe me. All right, so let's get this chassis underneath it. tiring when you're doing it by yourself did everything I could to not get underneath the car and uh, I got it underneath there the big thing you saw me having a fight with was I got a I got a drip edge at the end of my garage door it's like a one-inch lip so those little carts won't scoot over it so I had to jack it up and pull it over and jack it up and pull it over and wedge it and do it but I got it and it didn't kill myself <laughs> so we can move on to the next step let's do that so this is what it looks like inside of the garage now I got jacked it way the hell up in the air I mean, it's got, that's a good, good 16 inches off in the front. But I had to clear, I had to clear the A-frames. And another thing that I fought, uh, you might have saw, seen me struggling with it. The A-frames had to clear, had to clear my uh, spare tire well. I didn't, I didn't delete that. So I left my spare tire well when I bought my new trunk pan, and that was in the way. But okay, now I need to get this mostly shifted into position, and then we can start putting in the bushings. Uh, and drop it down all right I got all my body bushings in so there's two rectangles that go at the front leg at the cowl at the firewall then there's a single round one here two round ones here single round on the inside single round uh, just in front of the axle housing right there and then a single round way at the rear so those are all those all have the, the sleeve in them, and they've got uh, this little lip to, to help keep them centered and, and held in place. Um, I didn't have any that they showed with all the rubber band and the tape, so I don't know what that's all about. I guess it's a convertible and maybe the hard top. 
So now I've got my bolts laid out. They're all laid out so you can see them. So there's 14 bolts, there's 14 fender washers, there's six small diameter washers, and maybe three eighths and uh, 12 nuts. So these are, um, what's the long one? Three and a half inch, according to this, the, the sheet of paper. The long ones are three and a half inch. The next one are two and a half inch. Then they have two and a quarter and two inch. And it looks like you've got a sports coupe. They've got some uh, other sizes in there as well. So that's what I've got to figure out as far as exactly where they go. This is not too bad. I just need to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the car and put them um, in the spot where, they, where they're supposed to go and get that all mapped out before I start lowering this, this, uh, this body onto the chassis. All right, I decoded it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. These go in from the top. Everyone that goes in from the top gets a 3 8 inch washer. So this is the first at the firewall. They go in from the top. There's nuts and washers, fender washers on the bottom underneath the bushing. Then the two that go by, the, uh, by your feet at the tow board, those are the longest. They go in from the top. Uh, let's see. Does it say from the top? Yeah. Uh, not my two. So, yes. They go in from the top. They get a washer, and they get a fender washer and two nuts from the bottom. Then at the rear, at the absolute rear, uh, they also go in from the top, so they get a washer and a fender washer at the bottom and nuts. So the six that mount from the top are at the cowl, tow board, rear trunk. Everything else in the main body area all bolts in from um, underneath, which means that this is going to be the washer, and you don't need the nuts. So there's eight of these, two, two, and two. That's what we're going to do. We're on it. Let's go ahead and start lowering this body down on the chassis. I love this winch. It's just, it's just not, it's, it's, uh, it comes down fast. You see now that it rebalanced, it's no longer over the, over the chassis. How you liking my $12 Harbor Freight dollies? <laughs> I've been working them. Now let's see. Add a little bit more. And I'm dropping it like an eighth of an inch at a time. So even though it's fast, it you know it, it does what it needs to do. All right, that is really, really close. Yeah, it's about over it. Ten. I'm not gonna tighten it, but. Take some of the weight off of it. Oh, that was, <laughs> all the weights on the cha on the uh, chassis right now. So the body weight in the front, but it's jacked way up because I need to get in the back and go do that. So that's what I got to do there. All right, so I climbed up there and I lowered it down, and it's getting really close. There it is. It needs to be right here, and there's the center. So the body, I can just shove it over. It's got a little bit of um, a little bit of movement, so maybe if I shove the chassis over, to kick it, kick it over a little bit. Too much. <laughs> Boom! There it is. Lower it. Got it now. So I put most of the weight on it, but not all of it. And the bolt, the bolt goes in there. Yeah, there's a bolt in there, there's a bolt right in here, and it goes in. But I've got it to where you can see it sticking through, but I don't have all the weight of the car off, off of the uh, the hoist, so I can, you can see it's, it's, it's jumped up a little bit right there. So I can, shim it, I can uh, shift it back and forth, but it looks like it's coming in pretty good. I'll go ahead and probably put this one together. Yeah, it's a little bit crooked. So before I pull all the weight off of it, I'm going to shift it around and make sure that it's square back here. Make sure it's square in the front. And if you remember when I did the video, uh, when we painted the chassis, I forget what episode that was, but I'll put a link to it. Um, when we painted the chassis, I checked this chassis for square. So I know that these holes are right where they need to be. So if I have the front, the front two corners, rear two corners, everything in the center ought to line up. So I got my fingers crossed. Let's go ahead and continue bolting it. <clears throat> Deuce, why you gotta be on top of me? You gonna really, really? You gonna sit on me? 
You're gonna sit on me. You're kidding me. You're a bit. You're a bit dog. Stop. 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 Let me work. Bad dog. Bad dog. <laughs> I'm on the floor. I'm trying to put in body bolts in this dog. <laughs> Alright, so what I'm finding is I'm underneath at the body, like the hole for the bolt, if you can see that. Sometimes they're off a little bit, I'm finding, and so what I got to do is I got to take a Phillips screwdriver and shove it in there and adjust it to see if the body will, if the body will shift. Take it in here and just kind of like shove it. And right now I got so many bolts in it that it's not really moving. So it's just going to be what it's going to be. Got to fight it. Another thing I'm finding is that the bushings are tight in most of the places. But every now and then, like on this inside, on this one, you might be able to see it. If I can hold this flashlight. It's got a little... A little bit of play there you go right there so I'm gonna shim that I'm gonna shim that it looks like it might be one shim maybe but I'm gonna put it in there and I noticed that at the back that's a mess look at the gap look at the gap between the bracket and the last one right in front of the floor so something is off back there and it's not it's not the bot I don't know I don't know what it is if the floor is punched different but that's a big gap I'm gonna have to really create a lot of shims there and it's the same thing on the other side over there so we're gonna make it work I might I might uh, I don't know we'll see I'm gonna play with it well I'll let you know what I come up with now look I'm in the habit of not throwing anything away until I'm ready and I wasn't ready to throw away any of these body bushings, shims, and everything else. And so now I'm going back to this bag of junk. And I'm seeing, I'm confirming that I had two, two rectangular blocks. So that was at the firewall. So we know that's right. And everything else is around, around donut, just like we got in two pieces. So see how they're all mashed. They're all very hard too. But they have a big washer on the top of each one of these. I can only find a couple of them. I can only find a couple of those. But I did confirm, look. Original shims, new shims. So somewhere in here, this body was definitely shimmed. But I'm finding as I'm underneath there, everything is landing flat with the exception of two at the, at the inside of the front seat rear. The back bolts on the inside at the front seat. And I'm seeing maybe one, two. I thought I saw like a third or a fourth shim on, on a, a bushing. But I'm sure, yeah, there we go. I knew I, I knew I saw more. So that was it. There was like maybe one or two, one or two shims. But I think all together, I see three shims through the whole mess of, of, of junk that I pulled out. Maybe three. And then I, they gave me a stack of, you know, I don't know, eight, eight of these. But I'm going to have to take up most of these at the back uh, that I just showed you right by the uh, rear axle housing. Those that are at the um, rear seat. So... I'm going to have to shim that up, and if I need to, I'm going to steal some from my stack of junk. So let's keep going. Well, that's about it. I mean, I've got it in place. i got it in place now. Tighten them up. Um, i got every one of them in place except the uh, two that I need to get. Two right at the rear seat. Get this. Yep. The two right at the rear seat that have like about a quarter inch I need to shim, I'm not gonna be able to shim those because I've gotta get longer bolts. Um, I've got every other one in place. They're all they're all good to go. I only had to put shims in uh, in two. I had to put two on one over there, one on one over there, none over here, and then at the back by the rear seat or uh, by the um, at the rear axle tunnel, I'm, I'm gonna have to put like quarter inch, but it means I need to get longer bolts. 
So um, this is about done. Yep. <laughs> Woo, I love power tools. Love me some power tools. So let's see, there's six that are on the top side, two at the, two at the firewall, two at the kick panel, two at the rear trunk. Let's go get those. Um, yeah, it's been a good day. So I've spent, I've spent the whole day, I don't know, this is maybe four hours doing this. Um, yeah, I think this one I'm gonna have to do my hand. I can't get the power tool in there. So, I mean, it's a, it's a bear. I don't know how to get it in there without stripping it. You know, I mean, I, I got her done. Get her done. <laughs> so, and these these nuts are, are lock nuts. So they're hard. They are hard to deal with. That's why you do the, the tool struggle. So let me go ahead and get these. And then, uh, it's going to take me a few minutes. But then I'll, I'll come back and we'll wrap up. All right, let's see. Got the last few on the bottom. Underneath. Let's see. Like this one here. That tightened up pretty quickly. Got the one on the inside. I think that's one of the ones I shimmed. Oh, it's over here. Got that one. Come on. There, maybe I can reach it from over here. We'll see. Uh, this is what's so tiring, man. Woo! All right, I think this is the last one. Um. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. No, I got this one. get that one yet oh that's the one I need a longer bolt a longer bolt here longer bolt and shims over there longer bolt and shims over there so one two three I got everything else tight let me get out from underneath this car well I guess this last bit is more ceremonial than anything I mean the weight's already off of it but let me drop it and that's it that is it man body is back on the chassis Oh yeah, it's all bolted tight except for those three spots I gotta do. Come on, come on. <laughs> That's what all right, <laughs> now it's done. Lift it up. That's it. <laughs> so, it's gonna do it for another episode. I'm glad I got it done, but there it is. The body is back on top of the chassis. <laughs> Big milestone, big, big milestone. All right, as always, I appreciate everybody who watches my videos. I thank each and every one of you for the thumbs up that you give me and the subscribers. Man, many props to you, much love. Enjoy having you out here with me in the garage. Um, believe it or not, I'm talking to a camera, but I feel like I've got, you know, some, I got some force behind me, you know, helping me go. So, appreciate everybody who watches. If you're liking what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you're liking the channel, if you're getting anything out of it, please give me a subscription. I will see you next time. Not sure what it is, but we'll see you then. Till then, take, take care of yourself. Cheers. I'm tired. <laughs> and I'm out. <laughs> see you.